Emmanuel Abadji, you have just joined me with business news. Good evening yeah. to you, Emmanuel. Good evening. Is he enjoying? I'm well. How about you? I'm fine, thanks. All right. Yes. You take it away. Thank you very much, and thanks for joining me on business. The economy will indeed turn around and pick up from next year. That's the prediction coming from London-based Economic Intelligence Unit, EIU. There's more in the following report. According to the Economic Intelligence Unit, all the basic economic indicators will pick up from next year. EIU, for instance, is forecasting the growth will average around 7% based on developments from the country's oil fields. Inflation and fiscal deficit will come down to appreciable levels. Revenue will also witness a significant improvement. The unit is, however, warning that inflation and the city will witness some challenges before things pick up in 2017. This shows that the first quarter of 2017 will be a little bit rough before things stabilize from the second quarter of next year. That was a business report. Meanwhile, EIU is warning of some mild tension with Nigeria in coming months over reaching a common position on the EPA. It also cites some problems between Ghana and the Ivory Coast just because of cocoa smuggling and the border and maritime disputes. Now, still on business, Finance Minister Setepe will tomorrow, Thursday, the 20th of October, present to Parliament estimates covering expenditure and revenue for next year. The Finance Minister will, however, get approval for just the first three months of 2017. The current law requires the Finance Minister to lay before Parliament the budget three months before the next financial year. Joy Business understands that because there will be a new administration in place in 2017, there will not be any policy announcements. The estimates are critical to ensure that for the first three months of the next year, government can have the legal backing to spend revenue accrued. Government is hoping to spend 37 billion cities and raise 30 billion cities in revenue. The University of Ghana is in the process of paying debts and salary arrears it owes the UG Credit Union. Speaking in an interview after the annual general meeting of the union, Board Chairman Jonathan Anaglo disclosed the university management has assured the board of paying their arrears as soon as possible. Earlier on, the AG, earlier on at the AGM, some members of the Cooperative Credit Union raised concerns about the debt portfolio of the union for the financial year 2015. The debt is not too much of a problem. We have been trying to solve it and uh, the registry, the human resource and the finance directorate always try to help us. See, when people are leaving the university um, unexpectedly, that is where the delinquency comes. Unexpectedly, is it by the resignation or what? Yeah, some resign, some, yeah, some resign, some even leave without resignation, but they still come back to the university to collect part of their money's left, and that is where we get them. So the university alerts us. But the debt coming from the university, you know, the issue came up when uh, the government subvention to the university was not coming regularly. So sometimes three months arrears, four months arrears before government pays subvention to the university. And when it happens like that, then University borrows money to pay salaries to workers. So in effect, they borrow more than that. They borrow more than what you are supposed yes. to. Yeah, they borrow more than that. But of late, when the new VC came, the subvention is flowing regularly. So they are paying us our monies. But as at the time we were writing this report, if you look at it, the university was only as 9.4 million cities. That is why we forced and brought the VC to the meeting. Only salaries? Yes, salary deductions. You see, every, now because of the size of our union, the, the deduction for every month is around 1.7 million. Now, branding remains an important prerequisite for effective marketing of products and services. As a process of creating a unique image and name in the minds of consumers, the same can have devastating effects on businesses if it is not properly managed. The recall of the Samsung Note 7 handset from the market in September is said to have dealt a heavy blow not only to the range of Samsung mobile phones, 
but the company's electrical products as well. Ebenezer Sabote has been exploring the impact of the recall on the company's products over time. He spoke to some stakeholders of Samsung who say despite the setback he suffered with the Galaxy Note 7 devices, it can come out of his woes and maintain his brand as a market leader. In September, Samsung recalled about 2.5 million of its Galaxy Note 7 handsets introduced onto the global market this year. This was after the banning of the device by some airline companies and in certain countries including the United States. The situation emanated from the high propensity of batteries failing, leading to personal and property damage and suffered considerable damage to the brand of the global market leader. Prior to the mishap, several orders had been placed and had to be cancelled thereafter. The damage was inevitable and very costly. However, the impact was more to be felt in other parts of the world where consumers are more conscious than in Ghana. Corbin Krumah is a die-hard user of Samsung who would not batch despite the problems. There was a manufacturing error in the batteries, you know, the batteries manufacturing. So it causes, it causes these batteries to overheat and then eventually explode. That's what they say, but until some other body proves otherwise, we can only take what they say. I personally think they would have to do something completely different, you know, start come up with a different device because they have to earn people's trust again. Personally, I think I would buy it because, I mean, I'm a techie guy and I would know how to fix or do something to work around it. But others don't know, so they would be afraid to get it. So I think if I were Samsung, I would rebrand it and come up with something totally different. Many reasons have been assigned to the company's brand management and what could have been done to avert this precarious situation. On his part, Dennis Mensah, a phone dealer at Circle Tiptoe Lane, thinks Samsung hastily introduced the Galaxy Note 7 as it wanted to maintain their leadership position on the market. Samsung is becoming too complacent. Is it coming too complacent? How? Because it has the largest market, okay, smartphone market. And I think um, an issue, this explosion issue, must be taken really serious, all right? About the, them calling back all the orders. And they haven't really done so much homework on the issue. And they re-released the orders. I think they could have taken time to fix, fix it. So in all, when someone enters your shop, will you again recommend a Samsung product as against the other product? Which one will you recommend? Unfortunately, I won't. Because if I sell a Samsung to the person, they will obviously the chances of bringing it back is high. <laughs> and um, when they bring it back, then I'll run at a loss. A public relations consultant and branding executive, Kojo Williams, said Samsung's brand will be hardly hit and will impact on other products of the company. Uh, it's a major crisis for Samsung. It's a big crisis. And I'm sure that by now they're trying to uh, find ways to manage, you know, this huge, you know, crisis in terms of uh, coming, with, uh, coming out with strategies for their crisis communications process. I'm talking about the implication for the brand. Samsung is going to lose, um, is going to witness or have a reduction in um, the market share that they have. Currently, um, Samsung has about um, 23 to 25 percent of the global smartphone market, and then they are going to have um, a reduction in their definitely in their uh, revenue, and uh, there's also going to be a reduction in the trust that a customer has for the brand. He said the situation opens up an opportunity for other competitors to take advantage and rule the market. Some of the competitors, you know, like um, Huawei or Apple, could capitalize on this to uh, actually have um, uh, some advantage, you know, competitive advantage over um, the, the brand. So it's, uh, the implications are so, so many. Yes, so we have been speaking to some dealers of gadgets, basically mobile phones, um, who are... I mean, a bit worried about the issue of Samsung Note 7. Some say Samsung has been so complacent because it has the largest market share. Others also say it has to do with them not listening to their customers. But what really is the issue? Is it going to have any effect on their sales? Is it going to have any effect on their upcoming productions? Because today, if you want to recommend a Samsung to anybody, you have to think twice. Ebenezer Sabute for Joy Business. Hoteliers have started a campaign to get authorities to review fees charged them by various mandated state institutions. The charges, they say, are negatively impacting their businesses, which have already been hit hard by the recent power crisis. 
They are particularly concerned about the charges by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, which was recently approved by Parliament. Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Ghana Hotels Association, Edward Aka Nyamike Jr., has been speaking to Joy Business. We have various regulatory bodies. The hotel industry is regulated by the district assemblies in terms of the business operating permit. And then because they are properties, we also pay the property rate. Then we have the Environmental Protection Agency, we have the Food and Drugs Authority. And even within the district assemblies, we have what is called the suitability report and all those ones. Let me cite a specific example. Just recently, we got information that the Environmental Protection Agency had increased its rates. And for a five-star hotel, which in the past was paying, say, about 4000 a year for EPA permit, it's now going to pay 200 cities per room per year. Yes, 200 cities per room per year. So you can do the multiplication. And then you come to TV licenses, which is also paying per TV. Okay, you look at the number of rooms. If you take moving people, you're talking about 160 rooms, uh, at least 200 plus rooms. You see, so it's not a fixed fee from the bodies. They charge according to the services that they provide. Okay, and of course, it depends on the category of the hotel, right from budget hotel, the very small ones, to the five star hotels, which are quite big and pay a lot. So the, we have had issues with these rates, and I'm using EPA specifically as an example because their increase has been very astronomical. And we had a meeting with them last week to complain. Unfortunately, it's been sent to Parliament. Parliament has approved it, so we have no choice but to pay. But we are fighting for a review of it in the next year because they themselves agree on hindsight, that they have charged us too much. Okay. That's all in business for now. My name is Imano Abwaji. We have many thanks for watching. Meanwhile, for more business news updates, log on to myjoyonline.com/business.